local merchant who sells and displays healthful, refreshing, delicious double mint chewing gum invites you to meet all the folks here at Melody Ranch. Johnny Bond, the Cass County Boys, the Pinafores, Carl Kopner, and yours truly, Lou Cosby. And right now, here's our Melody Ranch Santa Claus himself, America's favorite cowboy, Gene Autry. Howdy, folks. Well, here it is, just four days until Christmas. And since we won't be able to celebrate with a lot of you, on that day we thought that it would kind of be nice to have our Christmas party this Sunday. So, boys, what do you say? We start things off by dedicating our first song to the little fat man in the bright red suit. Yes, sir, kids. Here comes Santa Claus. <laughs> Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. Dixon and Blixon and all his reindeers pulling on the rain. Bells are ringing, children singing, oh, it's merry inside. So hang your stockings and say your prayers, so Santa Claus comes tonight. Here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. He's got a bag that's filled with toys for boys and girls again. Here those sleigh bells jingle, jangle, oh, what a beautiful sight. So jump in bed and cover your head, cause Santa Claus comes tonight. Here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. He'll come around when time bring out that it's Christmas morn again. Peace on earth will come to all if we just follow the light. So let's give thanks to the Lord above, cause Santa Claus comes tonight. Here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. Fixing and fixing and all his reindeer pulling on the rain. Bells are ringing, children singing, all is merry and bright. So hang your pockets and say your prayers, cause Santa Claus comes tonight. Santa Claus. Yes, sir. And here comes Lou Crosby right behind you. I, uh, I sure hope that little fat man in the bright red suit does right for yours truly. Say, that reminds me, Lou. Uh, I don't believe you've said what you want for Christmas. Oh, I don't have to say, partner. Good old Santa knows I want my presents Western style. Uh, confidentially, Gene, instead of stockings at the fireplace, I'm, uh, hanging up shaps with a seam sewn together. You know, more room for the swell saddles and spurs and ten-gallon hats I'm going to get. Well, that sure sounds like a Western Christmas to me, Louis. Oh, but that's not all. Besides that, I'm asking for all Santa can get me of that grand old Melody Ranch favorite, Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Now, there's a gift that's more in your line, Lou. But now that it's right before Christmas, let's keep the record straight for Santa. It's delicious double mint gum. It's top favorite at Melody Ranch with everyone but you. So I'm hoping old Santa doesn't forget me when he starts passing out double mint. It's mild mint flavor is always a refreshing treat. Christmas or any day. And that pleasant chewing helps the fellow's digestion after those hearty holiday meals. Now, Lou, time for another song. A song that no Christmas party at Melody Ranch would be complete without. Boy. <laughs> The silence. 
do you say that we all get around the Christmas tree and start wrapping the presents we bought, huh? Hey, Johnny, suppose you wrap up that electric train for some... Here, the track. Here comes old number 999 again. Come on, Mr. Fireman, I need more. Hey, wait just a minute. Wait a minute. Now slow down that sonny boy. Turn off that train. Okay. Oh! For Marietta, Oklahoma. Now get that train wrapped and put Jimmy Freeman's name on it. I'll be back here in a second. Uh, here, I'll help you, Johnny. Don't touch that engine, Lou. She's got lots of steam. Hey, this thing's all right. How do you make it go anyway? Well, don't let Arthur know, but there's the S W I T C H right there. Oh, God. Well, let's uh, let's give it just one more time around the track, and then we'll wrap it up. All right, let's. Okay. <laughs> hey, what is this? What is this? Am I going to have to run you two out of the room? Right, okay, have you taken this train stop for no man? Okay, There's a no stop that train. Come on, stop it. There's a cow on the track. <laughs> Say, where's the switch? Right, right over there. All right, you two. Mm-hmm. You wrap the other things. I'll take care of this train myself. Always somebody to spoil the fun. Come on, little Okay. Uh, say, Johnny, by yeah. the way, uh, what the, what are you giving me for Christmas? Anyway? You really want to know? Sure, sure. Okay. Close your eyes. All right, they're, they're closed. What do you see? Nothing. That's it. <laughs> oh, no. That's, that's gratitude for you. I got you a pair of bookends. Bookends, good. That's the only part of the book that I read anyway. <laughs> <laughs> What's all the commotion over there? I don't know. Let's go find out. Okay. Oh, all right, Carol, the track there, you lug. Have your tickets ready. Come on, Mr. Fireman. I need more steam. I knew it. I knew it. He just wanted to get me away from there so he could have that train for himself. Oh, well, once a kid, always a kid, they say. <laughs> hey, boys and girls, while A-U-T-R-Y is over there playing with a T-R-A-I-N, why don't we all get together and sing a couple of songs, you know, Western style. Yeah, all right, Tottenham, right. 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 give us the key and let's get going. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. didn't like that, they wouldn't like turkey and fruitcake. Now, I'd like to sing a song that spells Christmas to grown-ups and kids alike. And even though you've never seen snow falling outside of frosted windows, or heard the sound of sleigh bells on a cold wintry night, you can still dream of a snow-covered valley and the pines, just to the pine trees that glisten in the moon. You can because this song will tell you how. Christmas card I write May 
and long as there are folks to sing it. A song that means kids and happiness and love. A song that means peace and goodwill among men. But you know, sometimes some of us forget it. We don't mean to, but we do. And so I have a hunch that this story may help us to remember. About eight years ago, long before I bought my Melody Ranch, Mark Daniels and his daughter, Ellen, lived down the road shortly. As the story was told to me, Ellen fell in love, ran off from home and married against her father's wishes. The old man was mighty bitter. He stoned his daughter, refused to forgive her for what she'd done. Well, weeks passed into months and months into years, and Mark Daniels became a sour, crabby, unhappy old man with mighty few interests in life. Then one day, four years ago, he received a letter from a lawyer in the East telling of his daughter's death. Her last wish was that her five-year-old daughter be sent to her grandfather for care. I guess it was just about the first of December when Mark and his housekeeper, Mrs. Park, went down to the train to meet Susan. That looks like her now, Ma. The little girl with the red coat. Here we are, honey, over here. you Stop shouting, Lilith. Stop shouting. The child sees us. Oh, Grandpa, I'm so glad to see you. Well, all right, all right, all right, child. Come on, come on. It's time to go home. Oh, don't you want me to hug your neck and give you a kiss? No, 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 no. That, uh, that won't be necessary. All right, all right, Luella, bring her along. Uh, yes, Ma. Come along, Susan, honey. But I want to go with Grandpa. Well, he's going with us, too. Yes, but I want to walk with him. Young lady. You'll do as you're told to do. And the sooner you learn that, the better off you'll be. Now take Mrs. Sparks' hand and come along. And that was the kind of welcome little Susan got from her grandfather. Well, a couple of weeks went by. No one saw either Mark or the little girl. By this time, Christmas was only a week away. So I decided it would be the neighborly thing to do to call at the Daniels Ranch and invite Susan to a kind of pre-Christmas party we were having at Melody Ranch for all the kids in our section. Howdy, Miss Park. Mark at home? No, he ain't, but I'm expecting him soon. You want to come in and wait for him? Well, thank you. Mm-hmm. You're looking mighty well. Huh? Flattery ain't going to get you nowhere, Jean Autry. Besides, I'm too busy to listen to all that much. Just you go on in the other room and have a seat. And mind you, keep your feet off the sofa. Hello. Well, hello there, young lady. What's your name? My name's Jean. What's yours? Susan. Do you like it? Well, I sure do. Say, that's a mighty pretty dress you're wearing. Oh, thank you. Do you know my grandpa? Mm-hmm. Sure do. You live around here? Oh, not very far away. Just over that hill you see out the window. Do you have a little girl? No, but I wish I did. Say, tell me, uh... Are you ready for Santa Claus, Susan? Well, no, sir. You see, Santa Claus doesn't come to see boys and girls out here. Oh, is that so? Who told you that? Grandpa. He says I'll get what I need anyway. Oh, I see. But I don't want anything. I just want Santa Claus to come see me. Well, what do you want here, Autry? Hello, Mark. Why, I came to talk about Susan. Yeah? What do you want to know about Susan? Oh, we were talking about Santa Claus, Grandpa. Now, look here, Autry. I ain't going to allow no such nonsense to be discussed around this young'un. I wouldn't exactly call a child Christmas nonsense, huh? That's what I call it. I raised one daughter with all them crazy ideas, and I ain't aiming to see this kid turn out the way she did. All right, Mark. It's your business. And I'll not interfere in your affair. Yeah, good, good. Just see that you don't. Now, if that's all, I'll say good night. <laughs> I felt sorry for little Susan. Her mother must have told her all about Christmas and Santa Claus. And yet, here she was in a strange world among strange people who were trying to teach her that such beliefs were nonsense. Anyway, a few days later, Champ and I happened to be riding by the Daniels' place when I noticed little Susan out front, swinging on the gate. Hi, Jean. Well, hello there, Susan. How are you today? Oh, just fine, thank you. Gosh. That sure's a pretty horse. What's his name? Why, well, this is Champion, Susan. Champ, say howdy to Susan. Oh, hello, Champ. Uh, where's your grandpa, Mrs. Spock? Oh, uh, they had to go to town to get some things. I have to wait here till they get back. Well, I'm glad the Champ and I happened along. Oh, so am I. Hey, I'll tell you what, Susan. Uh, just give me your hand, and the three of us 
We'll ride to the top of that hill, and I'll show you where Melody Ranch is. Oh, I'd like that. All right. Up you come. Oh, it's, it's the first time I've ever been on a horse. Mm. Why doesn't he go? Well, you'll have to tell him to go. Just say giddy up to him. Giddy up, Cap. <laughs> Susan, that's where Champion and I live. Oh, gosh, that's pretty. Mm-hmm, sure is. That's Melody Ranch, Susan. Does Santa Claus come to Melody Ranch, too? Well, sure he does, every year. Oh, I wish Grandpa would let him come to our house. Well, maybe he will. Right now, though, we'd better get you back home. Oh, let's go to your house and stay. Oh, some other time, Susan. Come on now. Tell Champion to take you home. All right, Champion. Hurry up! I took Susan back to her swinging gate and then headed home. Because I had an idea that Mark wouldn't like my taking Susan for a ride. Sure enough, I was right. That evening, right after dinner, she came calling on me. And from here on out, Autry, I'll thank you not to come to my place no more. I'll raise Susan my way and I don't want no interference. All right, Mark. But I think it's a low-down shame that you're denying Susan a Christmas. Yeah? Well, that will be my worry and not yours. I'm Autry. glad of that. I wouldn't have such a thing on my mind for all the money in the world. Well, you're cheating that child out of everything a kid has to live for. And one of these days, it's going to hit home to you. Wait and see. Well, it was only a few days until Christmas. And all the Melody Ranch gang was getting ready for Santa Claus. Decorating the place putting up a tree in the front room and doing all the other things that helped to bring the true spirit of Christmas. Then came Christmas Eve. All of us were sitting around the fire singing Christmas carols. Yes, sir. It was a real Christmas at Melody Ranch. Just like I hope folks everywhere were happy. Well, we've been singing for just about a half hour, I guess, when I heard the back door open. I thought perhaps it was some of the neighbors who had dropped by to visit us. So without disturbing anybody, I walked quietly back to the kitchen. Hmm. Funny. How does she? Huh? Why, Susan? What are you doing here? Santa Claus, please. Does your grandpa know you're here? No. I ran away. You shouldn't have done that, honey. But you told me that Santa Claus always comes to Naughty Ranch. I wanted to see him. He doesn't come to our house. Well, Susan, I suppose we'll have to make the most of it. But I'll have to take you back home in just a few minutes. First, we'll come on in and meet the folks. I want to see Santa Claus. All right, honey. Let's see what we can do about it. All right, quiet, everybody, quiet. We got company. Hey, what do you know? Who's this, Jean? Boys and girls, this is Miss Susan and Johnny. Oh. Susan especially wanted to see Santa Claus. Well, what? Oh, 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 I get it, Santa Claus, sure. Uh, all right, Susan, I'll, I'll go out and look for him. He, he ought to be along any minute now. Here you are, Susan. Now, you just set up a little fire and get warm while we're waiting for Santa Claus, huh? Well, I didn't know what to think. But I did know that when Mark Daniels discovered Susan was gone, well, there was no telling what would happen. In the meantime, Susan was right in the middle of things, having the time of her life. And when Johnny came in dressed in his Santa Claus outfit, her little eyes got as big as saucers. Well, Susan, what would you like old Santa Claus to leave you? Oh, I don't want anything, Mr. Santa Claus. I just want you to go see my grandpa. Huh? Why do you want me to see your grandpa, honey? Because he doesn't believe you're real. Well, now, I don't know. Why, sure he'll go see him, Susan. Won't you, Santa? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure I will. We'll show Grandpa, won't we, Susan? I'll tell you what, Santa. You have all the boys and girls sing a nice Christmas song for Susan. I have to run out to the bunkhouse for a minute. That's a good idea. All right, boys and girls, for Susan. <laughs> decided the only thing to do was to ride over and tell Mark exactly what had happened. As I started out from the door, I heard a horse coming in fast. 
I was pretty sure who it would be. So I paused for a moment to see what was happening. Sure enough, Mark Daniels swung from his mouth and started around to the front door. But then, just as he passed the window, he stopped quickly. Looked in, started again, and then stopped. Then he walked back to the window and looked in again. I stepped quietly up behind him and stood there watching his face in the light from the window. Minutes seemed to pass, and then something came over Mark Daniels, something that I'd never seen before. I saw the hard features of his face slowly change, and then, as he heard the boys and girls singing the songs of Christmas, he saw Susan sitting on Santa's knee. He saw the tree with presents all around. Mark was seeing and hearing the spirit of Christmas. Perhaps he was thinking of a Christmas not long ago, of his own daughter, Helen. His eyes moistened, and he slowly turned. Hello, Mark. Huh? Oh. Oh, howdy, Archie. I, I was just... Uh, uh, you've been worried about Susan, haven't you? Worried? I've almost gone crazy, Gene. I've called at every house around here. She's all I got left of my Ellen, Gene. Yeah, I know what you mean. I've been a mean old cuss. I don't know how to make up for it. A moment ago when I stopped by at this window and looked in, well, something happened to me. I found something that I lost a long time ago, Jean. Yeah, I know, Mark. I'm glad you found it. Well, come on, let's go in, Cece. No, 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 I don't want to spoil her Christmas, Jean. I... You I... won't be spoiling it. You'll be helping us. Besides, it'll make her mighty proud to prove to you that there is really a Santa Claus. Yes? Yeah? All right. All right, let's go then. Good. Now, you know what to do. Oh, yes, yes, you just just leave it to me, Gene. Hey, everybody! We have more company! Grandpa, Lord, Oh, Susan, my baby. I see who, who, Who's this fella? Santa Claus, see? And he's real. Well, now, he sure is. Well, hello, hello there, Santa Claus. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Uh, but Susan here tells me that uh, I never come to your house. Is, is that right? Well, Santa, I'll tell you. You see, for a long time, there ain't been any little kids at my place. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, now I'm ever sure. But, uh, but there is now. I live there now. Can he come to see me, Grandpa? Well, now, if he don't, I'll, I'll be mad at him. But right now, i, I got to get home and, and get ready for Santa Claus when he comes tonight. Now you're talking, Grandpa. Yes, sir, Susan? I'll be at your house tonight. Oh, I'm so glad. But all I wanted was for Grandpa to believe in you. I didn't want anything else. My little Susan. Bless your heart. Jean. Jean, will you bring Susan home after a while? Why, sure I will, Mark. Goodbye, honey. I'll see you a little later now. Don't you worry. Everything will be ready for Santa Claus, you believe me. And Jean, Jean, would you, would you walk outside with me? Sure, Ma. Be back in a minute, honey. Jean, you'll never know what, what this means to me. I don't know how to thank you. You don't owe me any thanks, Mark. Yeah, but you, you made me see and understand something that... Well, I've forgotten about it. All about it. No, it wasn't me, Mark. It was someone else. Huh? Who? Who do you mean? Well, when you're riding home, Mark, kind of take a look up there where those stars are. He did a great thing for you tonight. And you might want to thank him. Merry Christmas, Mark. Yeah. Merry Christmas, Jean.
Merry Christmas, folks. It's been grand from all of us to all of you. Have a good time, and we'll see you.